with Encanto! Oh! Down goes the Reem! I mean, just perfect on the chin. So every martial artist and fighter wants speed and power. We all want to be able to handle another man and throw punches like Bruce Lee. Come on, bro. Be honest, you would love to do that. But how do we achieve this said speed and power, though? Since speed and power are kind of a genetic thing, some people are born with speed, some with power. But when I think of that, I always remember the quote, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. What I mean by this is you can be genetically gifted all you want, but you can also work super hard to develop both power and speed. So there are many ways to develop speed and power, like by working out or hitting the heavy bag. So here are some tips on how I develop my speed and power personally, and how I've seen other people develop their speed and power. Technique. There are a ton of micro things that cause your speed and power to decrease. One being technique, having bad technique. I know tons of people that have terrible technique. They just hit you and it feels like you're getting hit by a pillow to be honest. So how do you combat bad technique or bad form? Well, you work on perfecting the basic technique. If you put your hips more into your punches and turn your foot over more on your cross, maybe you would develop more speed and power in those movements. Same goes with takedowns. You want powerful takedowns? Perfect the technique and make it perfect. This goes with anything. You want powerful ankle locks? Perfect the technique. Although power also comes from working out and training, simply just perfecting the technique will make your moves a lot more powerful and will make them a lot quicker and harder to escape. One big issue is too many people spar with bad technique and it gets ingrained in their muscle memory causing them to pick up bad habits which is then taken out on the pads or on the bag in turn making their power and speed really bad. Just remember it takes the small things. If you shadow box in front of the mirror you could possibly pick up your flaws then you're gonna improve. This also goes with having a good understanding of the basics. I said this in a few videos now, but some of us don't have a good understanding of the basics. We try to move on to really hard moves like cutting angles or clinching, throwing feints with combos. Now that may not be hard for you and it's really not that hard for me, but as a beginner, that's a lot to remember and try to do. So they do that when they can't even throw a kick properly without slipping. Remember, martial arts takes time. Combat sports isn't a learned fast thing. It takes time to learn basic striking or basic grappling. And remember, technique always comes first before speed. So just go slow and eventually you'll get both speed and power. Strength and conditioning work. So this is what most of you probably came here for, the strength and conditioning aspect of things. How can I work out enough to get speed and power within my hands and legs? Well, again, it's not really about how much you work out. It's about what you do. And most people probably think of generic split workouts and basic exercises to isolate the biceps or the triceps. No, this is not how you're going to build explosiveness and power. The exercises that you're going to be needing to do are plyometrics, upper body and lower body, compound lifts, ballistic movements, and heavy one to the five rep range compound lifts. In order to become extremely fast and explosive, you need to develop those fast twitch fibers. This means doing plyo push-ups or doing back squats with 90% of your one rep max. This will help develop that speed and power throughout the whole body. And in my opinion, the speed will come more from our next section, but the powerful takedowns will come from this. So here's a little small explosiveness workout I made. It can be something like this. 90% of your one rep max back squat three times three. 90% of your one rep max bench press three times three, med ball slams three times eight to 12, plyo pushups three times five to 15, and med ball throws three times eight to 12. And rest five to eight minutes between the first two exercises and like one to two minutes between the last ones. Now this is just an example workout, but you get my point. For speed and power, it requires heavy compound lifts. There are other ways you can do this too. You don't just have to do heavy compound lifts and med ball slams. You can do a hit style workout where you do plyo push-ups and jump squats mixed. This has personally helped me build a lot of speed and power in my shots, so it might work for you. But the thing is, speed and power don't just come from the shoulders and the legs or the back. A majority of it comes from your core, especially speed. Your ability to tighten your core and untighten your core is crucial, so core stability is basically what you are going to be needing for the speed and power. So you're going to work on anti-rotational exercises to build the core strength. My example for this is going to be Bruce Lee's one-handed push-up. He doesn't turn his body when he does it. It remains completely straight, which means he's also able to stabilize his upper body with one arm because he his core is tightened and his core strength is just unbelievable. And while he moves throughout the push-up, he doesn't dip his shoulder because his core stability resists the rotation. Also working on rotational exercises because you're rotating your hips when you're throwing your punch. So building rotational power and core stability are key. 
So the core plays a major role in throwing punches, throwing kicks, and even grappling. But to simplify what I just said, strengthen your core so that you can produce faster and more powerful punches, kicks, takedowns, etc. Now all of this combined will make your techniques pretty fast and way more powerful, but now onto the next section, flexibility. Now a ton of us may be wondering, how does your lack of flexibility negatively affect speed and power? Well, it stems back to technique. Of course you need good flexibility to be able to throw a high kick or grapple in uncomfortable positions, but one thing that is commonly missed is that depending on where your tight muscles are is where there can be a lot of issues. This might actually be more common in boxers because a lot of boxers don't think they need to stretch their lower body, which in turn leads to bad punching power. But why? If you have one tight muscle in your lower body, they can negatively affect how you turn your body when punching or kicking. A tight lower back can negatively affect your hamstrings, which can affect kicks and punching power, and it can also affect your ability to do certain submissions. Tight traps can affect muscles like the shoulders, causing issues when punching, like not being able to throw a full range of motion punch, messing your technique up, which in turn screws speed and power. Now you don't have to be doing yoga three times a day, but I recommend you take time to foam roll and stretch. Every great fighter stretches, they do it to stay loose so they have that power. Now having a flexible body can also prevent injuries. Some of us get injured so much because our body is so locked up and tight, so it breaks. Being able to be flexible will increase blood circulation and also allow you to recover faster too. Now that we know the benefits and disadvantages to this, what are some stretches that can build our flexibility and increase our speed and power? So for our upper body, you can do shoulder stretches where your hands are behind you facing your back and your knees are to your chest. You can do a back stretch where you kneel down and put your arms extended out right in front of you as you face the floor. You can do chest stretches where you put one arm and place your hand on the top of a doorway or anywhere above you and kind of stretch the pec out. And another good way of stretching the upper body is dead hangs and shoulder dislocations with a band. Now for the lower body, you can do things like the side split, which will help stretch the hip flexors in the groin, the back roll stretch, which will help loosen your lower back and help with hamstring tightness, the seated hamstring stretch where you reach out in front of you and touch your toes. The straddle split, this will help stretch the groin and the back, also the hamstrings a bit if you reach out to the side. The piformis stretch where you put one leg bent onto the other knee and push that knee in. This really helps with the glutes, like if you have really tight glutes and really tight legs and lower back, this will help untighten those little areas. So these are just some basic stretches that you can do to help loosen your body. I recommend you do them like once a day. I also recommend you foam roll to release the tension. All right, so bro, like I always say, make sure to implement these things into your routine, build the strength, build the technique, build the flexibility. If you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe. Also, go check out the Bakihama workout and diet course and go check out our Discord community. It's growing more and more every day. God bless, man.